Good morning, everybody. This is Josh Ellsworth with Stalls, and we're excited to have you on another edition of our Making It Together live video education coming out of my spare bedroom here in Uniontown, Pennsylvania, coming to you every Tuesday and Thursday. So we're broadcasting live to our Stalls Facebook pages, our Transfer Express Facebook page, and also our Stalls TV YouTube channel. So we want to welcome everybody back. And uh, we have about 45 minutes to an hour of fun planned together today. We'll be uh, talking about transfers. We'll be heat pressing some projects. We'll be talking about online stores a little bit today. Uh, and I'll be showing off a new t-shirt that I literally just got into the mail about uh, five minutes before go live time. So I did a quick change because it fits our theme today, which is all about uh, online stores and uh, screen printed transfers. So Craig, good to see you uh, this morning. Uh, thanks to our moderators for joining in our various Facebook uh, groups and YouTube pages to be able to share and help uh, everybody and answer questions. Uh, if you're joining in, be sure to shout out exactly where it is you're uh, watching from. I'd love to know that. And so, as I mentioned, uh, today's topic is all about uh, online stores. So I created a guide um, a little bit ago, and I'm going to pull it up here for you real quick. And it was called the... 10 Ideas for Successful Online Store Order Fulfillment uh, with Heat Transfer. So we, online stores are a big part of doing business in today's day and age. Certainly before we had COVID-19, uh, online stores were critical for selling to schools uh, and teams and even businesses. Uh, they help with uh, being able to uh, take orders from individual families or consumers and not have the school office or the coach uh, or the HR manager, whoever it may be, have to handle all of the money for all of the people that want to buy a shirt and support the cause. So it simplifies a big problem for um, for the, the customer that you're dealing with is that they don't have to handle payment and paperwork. You take that burden off of them. So alleviating that is one of the top benefits of online stores. And so when we start to think of online stores, I've seen a lot of online stores uh, done poorly, and I've seen a, a lot of online stores done in a great way uh, where you were able to uh, successfully execute and make a lot of money. And so what I did um, about three or four months ago is put together this guide, which was 10 tips for successful online store fulfillment. And so before I go into this, uh, I just want to clarify, when I say online stores, I'm talking about client specific web stores. And so what I mean is setting up an environment, a website specific to your client. So if you're selling to uh, a local business and they wanna run a fundraiser tee, being able to set up a website that says local business dot spirit sale or whatever it might be and, and launch only their items within that store. Um, again, if you're selling to a team, let's say it's the uh, St. Louis Broncos being able to set up a store specifically for the St. Louis Broncos or the league that they play in. And so everyone can go in there and support their team and not see everybody else's stuff. So um, when I talk about online stores, this isn't just taking a Shopify store or a normal e-commerce store and building it for your business. Although uh, I'd certainly encourage you have that type of store for your business. This is more being able to rapidly create a place for your customer to shop within that the members of that team, the employees, the staff members of that business, or the people that care about that cause are going to be able to buy from and support. So when we say online stores, that's what I mean. So whenever, um, first, I'm, I guess I'm going to show off uh, my t-shirt. And so uh, I was working with a local Uniontown business. I mentioned this Tuesday, and I've been following a campaign that I've seen on various screen printing groups and other groups that's called Here for Good. And the premise of the campaign is that um, screen printer, apparel decorator, your business collects other businesses in the community and say, hey, I'd like to launch a fundraiser t-shirt to help support small businesses during this shutdown in these store closures to make sure they can float some payroll, uh, continue to pay their employees or, or cover their lease, whatever it might be, depending on the business. And so uh, the idea behind this campaign is that you as an apparel decorator would go out and line up 10, 15, 20, 30 other businesses in your community, in your local town, 
come up with a t-shirt theme or themes. Uh, I've seen it done two ways, either one theme or one for each business, depending on the size of your town, I would say, and how many orders you would expect, and then launch a fundraiser sale, and then have the local businesses join together to promote that to the community to gain business. So whenever, um, I'm gonna show you my screen again, whenever we uh, worked on this together and built it, uh, this is what the website looked like. It is, got a lot of tabs here to show you today, is this one. And so the concept is we see 100% of the pro proceeds uh, support Uniontown area small businesses. It's as easy as one, two, three, add a t-shirt to the cart, enter the name of the small business you are supporting during checkout. Your shirt gets printed and shipped and $10 from each shirt goes to the small business you selected. And so um, the particular company, the bar room that's running this that was actually featured on one of our Stalls TV blueprint uh, episodes where we did a shop visit and set her up with her heat press uh, about a year or two ago. Uh, you can watch that training on the Stalls TV YouTube page as well. Um, she went out and uh, she has a retail space and she lined up a bunch of participating businesses in the community. And it seems like every day more businesses just get added to the list. And so again, the concept is line up these businesses, start promoting. Um, she literally just printed these shirts and shipped them out. And you can see she's already raised um, over $1,400 for small businesses in the area. And um, naturally, once pictures of these shirts start to hit social media, it'll be a snowball effect and we'll start to see more sales as there's more uh, awareness. And so you'll see uh, two shirts um, in this particular case. And when I go through my guide for web stores, uh, you may notice there's a youth and an adult size shirt. Um, while it would make sense to have a size of a, a design that's good for youth and a size for adult, um, because we really don't know how many shirts that will sell in this fundraiser sale, we came up with a design size that would be the same across all shirts. So when ordering screen printed transfers, um, that's a big trick, right? Because you're actually getting a sheet of paper with a transfer or multiple logos printed on it, you're paying for this whole sheet. So if your primary image size can stay the same across your small to double XL or triple XL or your, your adult in your youth, then that's gonna be a big win for your business when you're ordering those transfers and trying to save cost. Because if you make a sizing change to logo, we're gonna have to burn a new screen for that, or you are if you're screen printing, and then you're going to have to have the cost of that screen and your cost per piece is going up because now you're ordering from two different size logos, two different screens instead of just the same screen. And so when you think about screen printed transfers, that's the idea, you really wanna choke down and try to limit uh, how many variables there are. So um, you'll see that when we walk through this guide, but try to come up with a common design size use that design size across multiple items and you can really drive your cost uh, way down and drive your profit way up, which is uh, <laughs> really the goal. Sorry, I just read a, a comment here. I love it. So I got to share it. By the end of the series, you'll look like Tom Hanks on Castaway. So yeah, so you see the hair growing out. I got the beard coming in a little bit. Um, I've been debating with my wife on whether or not she should start watching YouTube videos on how to cut hair. Um, or maybe I'll just grow it out, who knows what'll happen, but I'm sure many of you look like that. I just can't see you through the other end of the camera, but appreciate that comment there. It's hilarious, we're all gonna look that way. Um, so uh, with that in mind, let me go through uh, some of this uh, guide with you. And for those of you that have web stores, I think you'll pick a lot about of this out. And for those of you that haven't started them, um, you'll you'll learn a fair amount about how to do it correctly the first time. And so one of the first things, uh, my tip number one, is anytime you're setting up a web store for a client, you really wanna think about time sales or timed items. And so scarcity uh, in retail really drives sales and we're selling in this case to a retail customer, we have deadlines uh, that we wanna do. And so what happens is when I put a deadline that store closes in this many days on my particular store, it helps me to not only motivate the customer to place their order for that item, but it also allows me to batch manufacture and group my orders. And as we just talked about, uh, the big benefit of that is being able to group your orders, order all of your shirts together to produce for that particular store, as well as group all of your like transfer sizes, order all of your transfers together to really drive cost out of it and drive uh, simplicity uh, into it. Next. 
uh, tip right there is after um, scarcity and planning through time sales or special edition items, uh, design with as few of designs as possible. And we kind of covered this, but you're seeing an image there uh, on the screen and the actual transfer that we'll be working a little bit with today, I'm gonna show you, uh, is this one. And you can see this is all one design, all one logo size that's ganged completely across this transfer sheet. So I'm able to fit 11 designs uh, per sheet in this case, which really drives my cost way down. So in this case, if I'm creating a web store for Victoria Harbor Yacht Club and I have this design, um, I'm able to take this small design and it can be applied to a lot of uh, different products at that logo size, whether it's a left chest logo, whether it's a hat, a bag, um, a jacket, a quarter zip, um, a polo. You can have all sorts of applications and, and items to decorate with a small logo. And really the cool thing about heat transfer in general is you're just ordering a transfer sheet. So I don't have to burn a screen with a different print location depending on if it's going on a, a left chest versus a pant leg. Um, I can leverage the same screen, just trim apart those prints or order them cut apart and just position and press, which you'll see us do uh, quite a bit here later. Um, just because I wanna make sure I don't miss this question, it doesn't get buried. Um, Ray asked a question, there is no dumb question, as you know. Um, on that fundraiser sale, I highlight 100% of the proceeds uh, go to, then we say $10 uh, per shirt after all the costs, is that any markup for you? And so the, um, the exact wording was basically that 100% of proceeds go to support small businesses in the Uniontown area because this apparel decorator is a small business in the Uniontown area. Um, they'll get the other percentage of the uh, profit. And so by doing this t-shirt, you can estimate the t-shirt the, the, uh, is a couple bucks. You probably have about, it's a single color white design. You probably have about a dollar or so in the transfer, depending on what quantity you're ordering them in. And so, and then with labor, you're probably all in for about four bucks. And so the business owner that's printing them gets uh, $10 uh, of the, the total price, uh, depending on what they're charging for shipping. So they're gonna make $6 in profit roughly on every garment while the other small business is gonna get $10. And I don't want you uh, to miss the point that during this process, um, that small business owner that can print t-shirt is generating awareness that they can do this and establishing relationships with other small businesses in the community that are gonna pay off once we come out of this thing and they need to order t-shirts for their business. So it's a bit of um, a marketing expense uh, as well and just helping the community of course is the goal, but in the process uh, you're doing really well for your business. So um, good, thanks for that question. So again, try to design when you're talking about successful web stores, try to design with as um, few designs as possible and really driving selection out of it um, will not overcomplicate it and it will take some of the um, some of the decision making out of the customer customer's hands, which is a documented uh, finding is that paralysis by analysis, right? Or the, uh, the issue when you have too many choices, customers can't uh, decide on which one to buy so they don't buy it all. So keep it simple. Next, and we've we've talked about this a, li a little bit, is keep designs the same size where possible, but very placement. And so in this case, um, and as we'll see when we start to heat press stuff, you'll see we have a small design. That same small design um, can be leveraged across a wide variety of items. So I actually have a good web store uh, example for this one that I wanna show you. And so this is one of our sample stores that we've set up through Spirit Sale for um, a tourism agency, Mount Tourism Company, um, just a demo site. But when we start to go into the products, you'll see that a lot of the same designs are purposed across multiple items. So while we have a variety of items, we have the same design on a hat, on a cooler, on a tote, um, and then over here on a denim shirt. Um, so the concept of being able to take that one design and leverage it across many different items is really going to be uh, helpful in your business. And yeah, so somebody asked, and, and I'm sorry if you haven't clicked the terms of StreamYard, we won't see who you are, but someone had mentioned how many can you fit if you Tetris those suckers, right? Yeah, and so if you're good at uh, mixing things together and building uh, puzzles and fitting in pieces, you can fit a ton of designs if you wanna take the time uh, to trim them out. And I believe that that's in reference to this particular sample that we showed earlier. Yeah, you can probably fit at least another half a dozen designs on here 
if you take the time to rotate them and fit them all in. And I've seen a lot of shops uh, that will take the time to do that. And actually that's what we've done on this uh, sample sheet here where we've even taken a, a small logo and, and fit that into a very small location and just use our scissors to trim it apart. So that's the awesome thing. And even with heat transfer vinyl, you can do that. You're gonna have to weed it, but it's the, it's the same name of the game as how many can I fit across the material uh, that I have. And so I'm um, gonna keep uh, moving on. I'll come back to some of your questions. I am seeing them there and I have answers. Just give me a couple minutes here. The, the next thing is uh, consider sizing as it relates to gang sheeting. So same principle, how many can you fit up? Think about your material width, think about your transfer size and think about how many logos you can fit, um, not only on the transfer sheet, but what will fit on your garment on the platen as we've talked about quite a bit. Next is uh, text personalization. So if you have the benefit of having a vinyl cutter and heat transfer vinyl as part of your workflow, Screen printed transfers, in my opinion, are the best for batching these orders and manufacturing quantity if you followed the rules that we laid out so far. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't incorporate heat transfer vinyl with your transfer item. So consider um, taking your design, whatever that might be, um, customizing the front of the T-shirt, but offering a name drop on the back. And so that would be a way to drive maybe an extra five dollars in profit into your garment. Now, the particular customer I'm working with, uh, she doesn't have a vinyl cutter yet. She has a very small staff in a retail store, so can't afford to uh, spend the time uh, operating the vinyl cutter and doing all of that. But this uh, T-shirt very easily um, could have had this design on the front, which is kind of generic. It's unite together. I support small business. And in the street light, you'll see the little Uniontown word mark, which is the name of the, the town. And that's the UT for Uniontown. Could have very easily on the back cut out a heat transfer vinyl, the name of the business that received the support and perhaps charge an upcharge for that and saying, hey, if you wanna upgrade and add the name of the restaurant on the back of the shirt, we can add that and the restaurant will get an extra few dollars or whatever the equation would work out to. So that personalization element on any web store, whether it's the concept I'm showing here, certainly if it's a team, uh, the example you'll see on the screen is from our Bellevue store. And so I'll pull up an example to show you that web store and how that works. So on the Bellevue store, this is just another web store created through our Spirit Sale web platform. You can scroll down and I can grab this shirt that we just looked at. And we can see it's it's added as a customizable youth performance hoodie. And the cool thing is we have our primary design that could easily be a screen printed transfer. And then we can click to add our sport to it. So if we want to select that option, um, we can make it volleyball or whatever it is and you're seeing the live uh, customization here on the screen as you type in the text. And so that way, when the consumer adds it to their cart, the kid gets a little personalized element to it, whether it's their name, their sport, a hashtag. Uh, you can think of a million different ways to personalize, and you should if you have a vinyl cutter. That's really what we're in the business of doing is selling uh, customized and personalized branded uh, apparel. So again, making sure that um, you're offering uh, personalization as well. All right, got five more here and then we're gonna press some stuff. Next, and I really like this one, is order more than you need and reopen the store after delivery. And so what's gonna happen is you are going to close that store in seven days or whatever it is. These shirts are gonna get out there. And then if you're selling to a school or you're selling to a dance school or a business, people are gonna see the other students wearing the shirts and they're gonna say, mom or dad, I want one of those too. Or, oh, I wish I would have ordered the hoodie in addition to the t-shirt. And so try to plan to reopen the sale. This is a really uh, powerful thing. Um, by reopening that sale later on, if you've ordered some extra transfers, which don't cost much to add you know, 10 or 12 transfers on top of an order of 100, it doesn't really add that much to your cost. Now you can have some left over to be able to print the one more and you can open the store uh, in a good way so people can order uh, one more or several more. Um, so I'm gonna take a couple questions here. So Patty asks over on one of our Facebook pages, I found it hard to match the color of the vinyl uh, to the transfers. Um, and you're right. And so uh, getting an exact match of your vinyl to your transfer on the same side of the garment is probably going to be difficult. So some tips I would give for that is pick a complementing color. So if you're doing the, the transfer and it needs to be a perfect match, and let's say the colors of the team are orange and green, if you're doing the transfer in orange, do the text customization in green. 
or use this time to elevate and pick a special effect vinyl. So a lot of times you can pick a complementing color in a flock or a metallic or glitter that looks nice when it's paired with the flat color. So think about your product selection for the vinyl because you're right, the worst thing you wanna do is put a red transfer on the front, try to add some a red text drop and have the colors be close but not match and it's just going to compromise the look of the entire piece. So good point and thanks for sharing that, Patty. Um, so a couple more questions coming in. Uh, let's see. Question here is uh, from Freddie. Josh, with Spirit Sale in the future, will stalls possibly add a design center where customers can design their own apparel like Custom Inc.? I use the Transfer Express Design Center. Um, the answer is most likely, Freddie. So right now we have a pretty big uh, development workload for things that we want to release, but um, we intentionally did not put the design work in the customer's hands other than through these editable uh, fields and optional fields. Uh, because what we found is for those running vinyl cutters, um, what would happen is the customer would design something that was way out of the capability of, maybe not capability, out of the realm of what you would want to produce when it comes in. And so in my experience and looking at some other shops, while other platforms have that, unless you're doing direct to garment, printing is a fulfillment method. It's really challenging with a lot of transfer processes to execute on what the customer uh, creates. And the reality is um, I, would, I would argue to, for most business models, to position yourself in your artwork um, ability as part of your value. Even if you're not a designer and you're using Transfer Express, uh, which are layouts done for you, leverage that as part of your worth and that will help um, get customers to reach out to you, engage with you uh, and continue to do business with you. And potentially it's something you can even charge for uh, in your business. So good question, thanks for asking that. All right, so let's go back to our uh, tips over here. And so we just talked about reopening the store. Next, um, and we've talked about this a lot in our making it together sessions because this is one of the big values of heat printing and that is uh, creative placement to help a brand stand out. And again, everybody wants their brand to stand out. That's why they're ordering this apparel. There's sponsor names that wanna be seen as well that can kind of help fund apparel. And so creative placement helps with that. So think about how can you put a placement not only on a left chest, but on a, uh, on a cuff, on a back shoulder, uh, on, a, on a back uh, neck label, anywhere that adds additional placement, that's gonna be an advantage of your heat press. Next tip is consider your product assortment, keep it tight but varied. Um, and so the point of this is somebody comes on and just listing five t-shirts probably is not going to increase your average order size because one customer is probably not gonna buy even three t-shirts. They may buy two, but probably not three. But if you have a t-shirt, a hoodie, a polo, a bag, a short, a beanie, something like that, now we're driving in more selection and so not only are we increasing our average um, item, but we're increasing our average order size. So the item would be increased with the personalization, but increase your order size through assortment. Um, you don't wanna have too many choices, but I always say somewhere around five to eight um, is a really good selection for a pop-up web store. This also helps increase your ticket price. So total store profit is showcase higher end items. And so if given the decision between a t-shirt and a t-shirt, somebody's gonna buy the t-shirt and you're probably gonna make your five bucks or six bucks or whatever it is in profit. But if you can get somebody into a, a nice piece of outerwear or a high end effect on a logo, potentially you can make more profit on that particular customer than you would have otherwise. So also consider your items and your decoration. Um, and then the last tip I wanna share is close stores on a consistent calendar. Um, and really what that helps you to do is plan your production. So if you would need to place an order to Sanmar or SNS Activewear or Boxercraft, whoever your blank apparel wholesaler is, if you're closing stores every Friday, let's say, or every Sunday night, let's say, it's really going to allow you to group your orders and uh, order from your vendors, whether that's your transfer vendor or whether that's your blank wholesaler um, and save on shipping expense if you're paying for shipping. Um, the other point that I'm mentioning here, and this guide was really positioned to launch Stretch Litho Mat and, and help point you as decorators in that direction. Um, if, if these were all separate web stores, I have one, two, three, four, five different logo types, but I am making web stores a big part of my business. 
the idea here is I can gang all of those multiple different logos on one transfer sheet of stretch litho. As long as each of them get to a similar order quantity, let's say 50 items, I can order 50 sheets and I can get um, all of those on one sheet with these this new category of digital screen printed transfer. So we'll be doing a lot more work on educating on digital screen printed transfers, the what I'm calling the lean logo formula, how that ties into web stores and just sales in general uh, with Stretch Litho to be able to help in your business. Um, now, there is a comment here. There are other print technologies. So transfers and heat transfer vinyl um, are what we're selling and promoting the most at stalls, what most of our customers use to fulfill. But Ken makes a good point. There is sublimation as well, and the sky is the limit in designing uh, for that. And so sublimation is um, a technology where the ink actually dyes the fabric, but you do need to have 100% polyester uh, based item, or at least a high polyester content to get the color reproduction. And also you're dyeing the fabric, so the garment needs to be white. So sublimation is great um, for those types of fabrics. And it's also a great complementary technology if you want to do 100% cotton dark t-shirt in a screen printed transfer, but you want to increase your product assortment, then launching some hard goods that can be sublimated. Things like iPhone cases, or keychains, or mouse pads, or there's a whole lot of hard goods that sublimation can customize um, as long as they have that special polymer coating that allows them. So sublimation is a great peripheral technology to pair with your heat press. Your heat press does the work for you. Stalls actually make sublimation transfers, so you don't even need to buy the printer if you don't want to, but you can get a sublimation printer for around 600 bucks or so for an eight and a half by 11, and really add an entire new profit stream uh, to your business and your online store. So good comment, Ken. Thanks for sharing that. All right. So uh, let's uh, let's press some stuff together. So I'm going to um, move over to the heat press and try to share your my view a little bit better. Now the product I'm going to be using today, which I will show you on the computer screen here in a bit, but I feel like I need to get up and press some stuff is uh, a product called Aquatrue. So Aquatrue is a, is a water-based screen printed transfer. And so this is, I don't even know what this is, episode 15 or 16 of these. And so I feel like I just want to get into more variety of products. Um, there is zero doubt that Goof Proof is our most popular transfer type. That's the product that's on my shirt. That's a standard Plastisol screen printed transfer. Um, if you're just getting started in transfers, I would start with Goof Proof. Um, Hot Split is a little softer version uh, versus Goof Proof. Doesn't quite have the coverage on the print. Um, I actually did Hot Split on a fundraiser sale for... Uh, some awareness. This is one I did in my side hustle um, for Diabetes Awareness Month in November. Um, we did this and I used hot split on this. If you look closely, you can kind of see maybe the color coming through, but this feels extremely soft and I didn't really care if it was a bright white on this. I want it to blend in and be a little bit more trendy. Um, so hot split is great if you're not worried about corporate colors or anything like that, just to be able to print a shirt that feels soft. Then we went through the other day, ElastiPrint, which is another screen printed transfer, ElastiPrint that has a little bit more of a, I'd say a grippier texture to the face of it, but it presses at a lower temperature. So it's going to be a good solution for performance wear and it's still Plastisol ink. And so those are going to be our three primary heat transfer types for traditional Plastisol screen printing. But AquaTrue, which is what I'm going to use today, is a water-based. So water-based ink, uh, you get a lot of advantages. It's a it's a greener technology in manufacturing. You don't have as much uh, byproduct and waste, and it just has a buttery, soft feel on the garment. A couple of my favorite things about AquaTrue, one is it comes on that larger uh, sheet size, and it's a clear carrier, just like our Stretch Litho that I've been talking about. Um, the other thing I like about it, it's a buttery, soft feel. So it is still a spot color technology, meaning you're going to pay for every color in the design. But some of the advantages of this, the water-based ink just feels so soft on that garment. And then also it applies down at 275 degrees for just 12 to 15 seconds. The backing's a hot peel, which is awesome when you're working with it. And it also applies to stretch fabrics and nylon. So while this may not be good for your small 
uh, business, like for this shirt, um, for a standard t-shirt, it'd probably be overkill. If you start to deal with a corporate brand or you wanna do more work in the corporate store world for online stores, this is a great product because it's like one product fits all. I order all of my logos and I'm gonna show you how you can apply this product to a wide variety of items here. But first let me turn these apart so I can get a couple of them ready. Again, this is AquaTrue. It's a product from transferexpress.com. It comes in a, I think it's 12 by 18, I'll have to check back on the computer, but about a 12 by 18 gang sheet so you can fit a lot of logos up uh, at one time. You'll wanna make sure the logos are in the same color so it's not like Stretch Litho where you can just group multiple color logos, uh, but you wanna make sure that they're in the same uh, color family. So I'm gonna start with a performance polo. So this is uh, actually from Badger. Um, it's a performance uh, polo that we're gonna apply on. I have my heat press set to 275 degrees. And anytime I'm pressing a polo, I need to get rid of the buttons. And so there are two ways to do that. One, I can change the platen. Um, or two, if you don't have the interchangeable bases like I have here on the Hotronics Fusion, I can use what's called a uh, print perfect pad. Now Transfer Express, transfers are never recommended to be used with the heat printing pillow. So because I'm doing transfers, I'm not gonna be able to use one of these soft pillows like that because I won't be able to achieve the pressure that I need. But I can use Print Perfect pads which are sold at Stalls or Transfer Express. So if you don't have interchangeable platens, just use this pad. Just gonna unbutton the collar here. I'm gonna insert this and that's going to help to raise my print area and have this buttons and this seam structure fall underneath it, which creates a really nice uh, flat pressing area. Now I'm gonna start with preheating and also adjusting my pressure because I've added this pad in. And so to adjust the pressure, I'm gonna turn it counterclockwise. Adds quite a bit of thickness uh, to it, so you'll need to make sure you adjust for it. All right, you're gonna preheat. Um, while I was adjusting my pressure, I was able to get to that preheat. And this is our standard AquaTrue transfer. It's just water-based ink. It has the adhesive on the back. Um, we do carry a dye block version. I'm just using the standard version. That's what I had uh, on shelf here. But you can always order the dye block version as well. So I'm gonna position into place. Again, I'm just pinching top shoulder and running my vertical line down. This polo has a unique seam structure. So it gives me a, a good guide with the seam structure for my placement. There's really not much real estate for placing this design. Uh, there's only one spot it can go with the size. So I'm just gonna press it down at the 275 degrees for the 12 to 15 seconds. Yeah, Cheryl says, I love the pillows and pads over on our Facebook uh, conversation. So pillows and pads are great, make life a lot easier. So after it's been applied, you're able to hot peel this one. Carrier basically just falls away. And then we have our completed look and I'll show you a close up of that. So you can see, as I mentioned, this had a unique uh, seam structure to it for this polo. Um, so it was a really nice, easy placement um, and, and just looks and feels great. You almost can't even feel it on there. Um, compare it to a Premium Plus for those of you that have used that, it's that soft, buttery, uh, type of feel and it has a stretch and it goes to nylon. And so with what I'm saying with team stores, the idea that I can stand this up for Victoria Harbor Yacht Club, I can order an assortment of these logos. I can put them, either order them for the flash sale or I can put them on shelf. And as that store gets an order, if I'm going to be their merch store, I can just grab a logo and press it. So no, no burning any screens, no worrying about um, setting up to be able to do that. It's just grab the garment that's been ordered or order it in and then press. So this is another garment from uh, Badger. Um, this is a more of a, a fleece, a performance uh, based fleece product, uh, quarter zip. And so it's really not that difficult. We're gonna follow the same uh, rule set here where we're gonna load it on. We're going to take our print pad that we've already set up our pressure for. I'm going to uh, position that inside. There is a little bit of um, 
fa excess fabric under where the quarter zip is. Sometimes you'll see that. So I like to pull that excess fabric and just tuck it under the pad or get it out of the way. If I can feel it, I'm kind of feeling to see if I feel any bumps or anything because those bumps can cause like scorch marks or markings of the shirt. So you want to be careful with that. Um, and then I added a little extra thickness for the fleece. So I'm thinking I'm going to need to lighten the pressure just slightly because the fleece is thicker than that polo that we were doing. And there we go. I'm on the seven pressure that I was just at, which is a medium to firm. Just grab another transfer logo, position it into place. And heat press. So it almost seems crazy how easy it is. Um, I always say the key to succeeding in a heat press business is you need to have some basic know-how of what product to use to make maximum profit. But it's kind of like any other business. If you can sell, you can fulfill with heat transfers. That's how easy it is. The most difficult part about working with heat transfers is selling. So how are you going to go out and line up businesses that are going to be able to get fulfilled through programs like this and keep it really simple. So really high quality, high end result. If you wanted to add in, you know, when, when we talk about placement, if I were creating this for this company, I probably would have dropped in maybe like a small logo that was uh, that just said Yacht Club or Victoria Harbor or something like that. And being able to add just an extra placement down to uh, the sleeve area or the back uh, neck area takes me 12, 15 more seconds. And it's gonna increase the perceived value um, of that garment. So two garments down. So again, when you're fulfilling with heat transfers, it's this, this easy. So going into some higher end garments now. So we just did the quarter zip. Now we're talking about um, a really nice high end jacket. And so this is an Ogeo uh, jacket. It's a 100% polyester base and it has some uh, polyurethane uh, material in the hood structure. We're not going to push our luck and try to print on that. Um, actually, I may try it. Um, after we do the, the front with the good look, we'll just give it a whirl to see if it works. And then again, I'm just going to load it. Going to raise my print area and I'm going to take a look for questions as soon as I lock this one down. Make sure my pressure is still good. Keep in mind when you are printing on a smaller print area, I mentioned this a lot, um, that pressure is coming down onto a smaller area. So you don't need as much pressure as you normally uh, would for printing these areas because that applied pressure on that small area is really a lot if you're up on like say a seven or an eight. So you need to take your seven or an eight pressure if you're going down to a smaller surface area, whether that's a platen or a pad, and bring that down to more like a four or a five. So cut it in half if you're cutting your platen in size in half. So that one kind of just fell off for me, just peeled off on its own. And I think this looks really sharp on black. So you can see uh, the finished result. So again, really easy. This is an Ogeo garment. The two red garments that I used were Badger um, and lots of unique things that you can do with AquaTrue because you don't need to worry what you're applying to. It presses at a lower temperature, it stretches, um, it feels great. And so it's going to be one of those products. The minimums are a little high, so it's not going to be one of those things you're going to use for a 24 piece job um, unless you can group a lot of customers uh, together. Um, I would recommend that this is more focused on your bigger clients and your bigger opportunities. So I told you I wanted to try this. I'll probably meld it, but we're going to give it a whirl anyways. I want to try to apply onto this polyurethane, say if we want to put that logo on the side here. And I'm going to have an issue because the jacket keeps wanting to fall. So a good fix for that, if you have the caddy stand, is just take uh, something simple like a lunch tray, which I have right here, and that'll just help me to relieve some of that weight, uh, rest the jacket underneath, and then it gives me both hands so I can work with uh, getting my placement correct. Don't want to apply direct heat to this, so I'm going to grab my cover sheet just to test here for a few seconds, see if it melts.
feels like it's gonna melt, but I'm gonna try it. Now, usually if I were pressing something like this with say, fashion film or a heat transfer vinyl, which I'm extremely familiar with, I know those heat transfer vinyls when I'm dealing with like a soft fabric, whether that's like a faux leather pad folio or um, something like this, a polyurethane based uh, raincoat, I would tack it down for a couple seconds and I would try to get this carrier off as quickly as I can. Because usually what happens, even if it applies accurately, you'll see that carrier indent and leave a marking. And so being able to get that carrier off is important. And so I'm gonna try to see if I can even just tack this for a couple seconds and see if that carrier will come off. If not, I'll go ahead and do the full application. But that's, uh, let's see, let's do four seconds here. See if that carrier wants to release at all. Yeah, it looks like it's going okay. So I'm taking my time here peeling it to make sure it's not gonna lift off. And it seemed to do okay there, so that's great. Got my carrier off and now I'll go ahead and run it for the additional time without the carrier on it, making sure I'm still getting the melting point. So I didn't say the item numbers from Badger, they were sent to me, but I'll make sure I call out the item uh, numbers in the show comments afterwards. Whenever you press something like this and it's hot, one of the biggest threats is having the item touch itself and want to stick together. But, you know, not perfect, but yeah, it actually did start to stick together uh, where I pressed it, which was my main issue. You can see a little mark there. It was folded on itself and pressed together. But the logo actually stuck if I would have had some time to load it um, and do it accurately. So that shows you some of the versatility of Aquatru as far as like what you can uh, print and experiment uh, with it. Again, we're never going to recommend this for lab certified wash testing. Um, so don't expect that. But that's part of the fun is you can experiment and perhaps pioneer some unique applications just for your shop that no one else is doing. So I'm going to come back over uh, to my standard location once I clean it up a bit here. And then we'll take some questions and I wanna show you just a couple more things about this product. All right, so let's take a look for some questions. Appreciate everybody joining me today. This is our Making It Together live educational event. Uh, we've added a ton of educational events um, to our list, not just this, but we're doing webinars nearly um, every day. Um, Jenna's doing her Making It Together Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 a.m. Um, so make sure you check out the events page on the Stalls website and you can get a complete list of all the events happening from both Stalls and Transfer Express. There's a ton of them. Uh, happening. I know that I'll be speaking at a, uh, what's it called, a creator's boardroom conference for Omniprint next week on the 16th. Uh, I didn't piece together the times, so it looks like my uh, my session is at 11 p.m. Eastern time or 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific, so that'll be fun. Uh, but we have all those events up there so you can see where we're at and what we're up to and also see from some other uh, speakers that are out there. All right, so let's see. The uh, so I don't when I'm whenever I'm using screen printed transfers, I do not need to use a cover sheet on that uh, transfer. Uh, the only time I used that cover sheet was when I was worried about applying the polyurethane at the end. But really, the only screen printed transfer that we recommend using a cover sheet for is our stretch litho mat, and that cover sheet comes in the box and it very clearly says it. Um, very clearly says it uh, on the on the instructions uh, that are in the box. Um, and it looks like we've shared um, some info on the Badger Polo and Quarter Zip. So if you go to snsactivewear.com and look under the Badger uh, product category, you should be able to find that. So thanks uh, for, the, for whoever shared that. And then also, again, the Ogeo Liquid Jacket. Um, it's at sandmar.com. Looks like it's item 8712 and the color was black top for those that were looking. So thanks for sharing, I assume that was Jenna. All right, and then we've also shared the link to all of our events page. So um, with that in mind, I wanna go back over just for a second um, and make sure you all know where to find AquaTrue and 
some other details about it. So over on transferexpress.com, if you go under the transfer category and just go under heat applied transfers, water-based transfers is its own category. So we'll be coming out with water-based transfers, uh, more styles of water-based transfers. Actually, we're working on coming out with something called Ultra Color that's going to launch this year that will be like stretch litho with a capability of digital screen printed transfers with performance like AquaTrue that you just saw. So that one is going to be absolutely lights out. Uh, I cannot wait till we come out with it. Stretch litho is phenomenal in its own right. Um, allows you to do a lot of different things, but once we come out with this ultra color, you guys are gonna love uh, the performance of it and what it can do. So click on water base once you're there and we'll see the Aqua True screen. Wow, let me try that again. You'll see the AquaTrue screen printed transfers, that's a tongue twister, and also the screen printed numbers. And so the screen printed numbers basically are stock numbers that you can order. And we have a lot of big sporting goods companies that are using these, especially for soccer, uh, because you can order them with the dye blocker for those um, sublimated soccer jerseys, which is a great benefit. But if you just wanna get the standard transfers, you can click on that, and you can read all about um, the, uh, the pricing. You can download the price sheet, see the minimums and the quantities. You can see the available ink colors and you can also download the uh, CPSIA letter of compliance. that says it's good for children's uh, apparel and safe and request a sample up at the top there. So I definitely recommend you take a look at that uh, product. And again, the, the difference or the benefit for water-based transfers are one, it's a uh, greener technology. So in the manufacturing process, there's not as much uh, byproduct and, and waste as there is with Plastisol. So it's a cleaner technology from a manufacturing standpoint, which is becoming more important, especially to a lot of larger brands. And there's the trickle down effect. Um, but just if you look at it at the, on the surface level for what it does, um, it has a buttery soft feel. So I think it feels softer than anything that's out there. And it also applies uh, to more fabric. So it gives you a lot of versatility. Order one transfer, one size, apply it to cotton, poly, nylon, stretch fabrics, doesn't matter. Um, one product can do it all. And so that's a big benefit, especially when you're launching web stores and trying to print uh, to order where there's a known company logo or brand logo. Um, yes, and water base is good uh, for children's apparel. Um, and I'll have to check with my friends over at Target, who I assume are attending, if there's a comparable product that can deliver out to the UK, because I saw that question come in. So we'll have to get back to you on that. All right. So that covers uh, AquaTrue, what you can do with it. And again, you could upload your logo on Transfer Express, or you can pop into our EasyView online designer, which when you set up an account, you can get free access to for 30 days. Um, and then as long as you place a transfer order, you'll enjoy ongoing access. And so Hopefully that helps some of you. So I'm gonna stick around and I'm gonna look at uh, more questions. Um, if you haven't completed the survey yet for our Making It Together events, we're gonna share that survey link now. It's four questions. I know many of you who are watching aren't completing the survey, shame on you. Uh, it's just four questions and it gets you into our giveaway, which we'll announce some names for uh, our giveaway again tomorrow. And all of those that have won previously, um, I just got confirmation that all the samples went out uh, yesterday, the sample packs that everybody won. So. I'll uh, be expecting that uh, soon. Okay, so Nas, good to see you, Nas. Hope life is well in San Antonio. Ask, how does the feel of AquaTrue compare to Hot Split? Um, I'd say Hot Split has a grittier texture to it, so you can definitely feel that it's Plastisol, but it is probably the softest Plastisol that you can get, whereas AquaTrue is more of a uh, a very smooth. Uh, almost buttery uh, surface to it. So they definitely feel different. Um, hot split tends to blend more into the garment if you're doing poly or if you're doing cotton rather, whereas hot split, hot split, ten, sorry, hot split tends to blend more with the garment, whereas AquaTrue tends to sit on top more. But even though it's sitting on top and not like going into the fibers, you still get a really nice, soft, flexible feel, kind of like Premium Plus. All right, um, another question that came in uh, from Patty. Okay, um, so I will make sure we take this up for, with our team. Actually, I was just talking about this yesterday. Sorry, I was meaning to grab another question, but since this came up, um, thank you for the feedback. Um, what happens with the Transfer Express designer 
is that if you do not uh, use the service or order transfers, typically, I believe it's for six months, um, that designer uh, access goes away and you have to ask to have it reopened. And so we know that's a pain for some of our customers that don't order at a higher frequency. And so we're looking at ways to be able to fix that. So we have heard that feedback, Patty, similar feedback from others. So we appreciate that. Um, and Tracy asks, um, is AquaTrue a full color transfer or do you pay per color? AquaTrue is a pay per color uh, transfer. It's a spot color transfer as we call it. Um, however, when we come when we come out with the ultra color, that will be the full color version of AquaTrue for all intents and purposes. But for now, the AquaTrue that I showed, showed today is spot color. So you wanna be careful on how many colors are in the design. All right, I got some new questions coming in. Hey, congratulations here. Upgrading from a stepper to a servo motor cutter today. So you are welcome for the info. That is a huge upgrade jumping to a servo motor cutter. We've been talking about it on previous episodes. So appreciate uh, y'all uh, that are interested and in still investing into the business and choosing to do it with stalls. We do have uh, show specials going everywhere across the country um, that are going because we are not attending events. So you can look at our promotions link, which is right on the stalls.com homepage uh, to get to all those promotions, which includes a great deal on the cutter I have sitting behind me, which is the GraphTech CE6000. Um, also a good deal on the Roland uh, GS24. Um, Gary asked, do we offer cutting services for our gang sheets? And the answer is yes, as long as you're not fitting them like puzzle pieces and Tetris and there's nice spacing and lines, you can order the transfers during checkout, uh, cut apart, and we'll, we'll do that for you. Uh, Ray, appreciate the kind words um, on our session today and hoping that I'm um, trying to come up with new content and reading your feedback from the surveys, just trying to teach new uh, concepts and really how to, there's so many, there's only so many ink formulas and types of transfer vinyl we can show. Um, and so now we really are trying to translate it into business intelligence and how you can build a smarter uh, business coming out of this to be more profitable. All right, uh, let's see. I think I'm caught up to questions, at least those that have come in recently. Mike. I'm sorry, cost calculator for Canada. This one is completely on me. I just need to prioritize it and get it done. So it's completely my responsibility. And time frame, what am I gonna commit to? I promise I will have it done by this time next week, the 16th. All right, I may reach out to you for a little help though. All right, and um, got some many questions on good morning and how am I doing? And I'm doing great here um, in Southwestern Pennsylvania. I've been home with my family, my daughter, well, the governor, I think officially canceled school this morning from what I heard for the rest of the year. Um, so I'm spending lots of time uh, thinking and reading and doing these sessions and take a walk around the neighborhood just about every day um, and doing a lot more studying and learning new things that I'm interested in as well, even outside of t-shirts. So hopefully you all are doing great as well. Um, last question uh, that came up that I wanna cover is, can we try Spirit Sales Store for 30 days? And that's a great question. And actually because of this COVID-19 and what it's done to small businesses, we made a decision at Stalls a few weeks ago um, to allow folks um, to have uh, basically access to Spirit Sale for 90 days. And so um, what that means, and, and we ask that you sign up for one of our demos. I'll go through how to get into one of these here in a second, because we just don't want anybody signing up that doesn't know anything about websites because we are pressed for time and can't afford to handhold at the level we typically do from a service level. And so, um, but we decided that online sales are really important right now, um, not only for time today for doing fundraisers like we talked about earlier, but also when we come out of this and planning your business and how are you going to sell to schools and teams and organizations at the end of this. We think Spirit Sale is a really, really critical component of doing that. And so you're able to get 90 days access and then 90 days will ask you, um, do you want to buy it or do you want to cancel it? And there'll be zero penalty uh, for canceling it. But again, I would ask just out of respect for our team that supports it to make sure you have at least a base knowledge and familiarity with working with uh, software and, and websites and, and online programs. It's really easy, I think, but go through the demo and make sure you think it's something uh, you can handle. So I'm going to show you uh, how to get to the demo link and then we're going to conclude for today. And so if you just visit uh, it's spiritsale.com and that's where I showed a lot of the stores 
Um, it'll come up with a lot of information about what Spirit Sale is. Um, you can click here to get to some of the example stores that I um, showed today if you want to go deeper on them. Um, you can also see the pricing, which is $599 a year normally. So that's what you'll be asked to pay after the 90 days expire. And you'll be able to click schedule a demo. And Mike Koval gives all of our demos um, and he does a great job, uh, does them daily at three o'clock. Um, and so basically you'll just click to schedule a demo right here and you can even get in uh, today's session still or tomorrow's session or anytime next week. I would recommend you attend that. It lasts about 45 minutes and there's 15 minutes for Q&A, but he will go completely through the back end and show you how to set up a store. So again, we shared the link to the survival guide. We are pulling out all the stops to try to help you in your business, but we need to hear feedback and share what do you want to see moving forward. So please fill out that survey and by all means, have a great weekend, do something fun, uh, have a happy Easter um, and find a creative way to celebrate it with your family and your loved ones. Thanks so much and we'll see you all soon.